all right guys welcome back in this story we're going to talk about how we can extract data from a database and then write it to parkit and we're going to go through some options of how we can write it to parkit and what are the benefits what is the easiest way and what is the most optimal way so with no further ado let's jump into it so our first processor it's a query database table we have a DBC connection pool, which it's set up to log into my local MySQL installation. We then forward the output of that to this three uh, processor, convert record, convert Avro to Parkit, and merge record. So let's go ahead and let this run a bit. Okay, so let's put this to stop. So we have about 10 megs in each. After we convert all this record, we're gonna use the put file uh, processor to write it to an area on my local host. So we are, at this location so first what we're going to do we're going to go over the convert record processor basically this is going to accept avro data the output of the query database table it's in avro so if we look at it it's just going to be a bunch of mumbo jumbo it's not going to really make sense right uh so that's not really readable or usable by us so look at the metadata again doesn't give us too much information basically we're going to run it through the convert record convert record we use a record reader and then a record writer so we're going to read, read it in Avro and we're going to write it in Parkit. So let's go over the Avro reader configuration. You go here, click on the configuration. The only option we're going to use here, we're going to use an embedded Avro schema. We're not going to refer to the other services because we, we don't, we're not going to link to them to translate the schema. So basically it tells that use the schema that comes with the payload because the Avro carries the schema in the payload. And then we're going to write it with put record. This we're going to tell him do not write schema for whatever reason. We don't need it to write it. And then the schema access strategy, he's going to inherit the schema from the incoming record. And the rest is going to stay the same. We're not going to use the compression. We're just going to leave it uncompressed. All right. So let's go ahead and run this and let it all the data flow through. All right. So we can see all 2,500 records were in converted with success. Now, if we look into our folder uh, and you see, we have a bunch of crazy name files. So let's count them. Make sure that we have those 5, 2,568. Let's do a refresh. Next, what we're going to do, we're going to jump into Python and using pandas, we are going to write a script to read and count the records. You have to have pandas installed. So the way you do it is basically you have to have Python first. Deep install pandas. But I'm not going to do that because I've already done it. I'm just going to jump into my Python uh, command line. And I'm going to say import pandas pd. Next, what we're going to do, we're going to read all the files that we have imported into this data frame. We're going to say pd.read, read park it, and we're going to give it the path to that particular folder. So it's going to be data demos park it. Close. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to count the number of records so we can make sure that he read them all. All right, so we see we have. What is it? 248,805. So let's save this value. And what we're going to do next, we're going to exit this terminal line, navigate one level lower, and we're going to measure the size of this particular folder. And we can see it has about 10 megs in size. So for that, for now, it's good. Let's jump back in, remove everything, and go to the next example where we're going to use the convert Avro to Parkit. Basically, this is similar to convert record, but this time we don't have to do any configuration. He assumes um, that you're giving him Avro and he will inherit the schema and he will write it to park it. This time we can choose from the compression value. So you see we have Uncompressed, Snappy, GZIP, LZO, and all the other. We're going to choose Snappy and we're not going to touch the other options. Let's review the folder here and make sure that we don't have any records. And let's start this processor. So say it out of, out of this two, convert Avro to Parkit is the easiest one to configure. The only thing you have to do is drag it on canvas and change the compression type. All right, so this has completed. We can see that it took him 17 seconds as compared to um, 18 seconds, I would say. So if you go here and you want to get more um, status information, you would say total task duration. And you could see here the value, but so that's about 18 seconds. That's about 17 invoked. So I would say the convert average to park it is a bit faster. But let's go back here. Let's go to the same exercise. We're going to type Python. And this time, since we used um, Snappy, 
we got to give it the engine, which is pi arrow. So this is the command to be able to do it. Otherwise, he will fail. All right, so we get the same number of rows. So, so far, so good. So let's exit this, go a level down, and again, do a, full, a size count. So we can see it's 10 megs as well. So it kind of makes sense, right? The previous one is 10 megs. We have the same number record. This one should be the same, the same size. All right, so let's go back to our folder and remove everything. And now let's go to my favorite um, transformer, which is merge record, merge record um, processor. Basically the merge record processor uses a record reader and a record writer. But this time what he will do, he will merge the records in the same file. So here what we tell him, we tell him to, to merge every night, every 100,000 rows and whatever is left over, uh, wait for 10 seconds and then merge that as well. Basically if in, in the span of 10 seconds, we don't get 100,000 rows, much whatever is left there. The configuration of the Parquet record reader, it uses Snappy. So if you jump into it, so we'll look at the configuration. We say you set the average schema, inherit the record schema, same thing. The only thing we change is set this to Snappy for compression. So we removed everything from there. Let's make sure no records and let's run this one. So if you see here, it took him about one second and a bit to run the entirety of that thing. And then he waited for 10 seconds to run the next one. So performance wise, we can see that merge record, it's much better than the other options. Now let's go and review the other uh, options here. If we do this, we can see we only have three files. So let's jump into Python and let's do the same count as we did previously. So let me copy this command. So we can see we have the same number of records. It seems to read the files much faster because he's only opening three files. But the most important part would be this. Let's go down one level and do the same. Um, measure the content of the folder. Wow, we went down from 10 megs, 44 kbytes, or so that's a massive difference. So that's where uh, I would recommend for people who would go for this strategy where they're converting data from your, their database output and you want to push it into Parquet, make sure you merge it and you bundle it in together. The merge operator also have correlation attribute name that you can take advantage or you can use a different bin algorithm, you know, in this case. I have a tutorial which is pretty long, extensive in the past that we go over the merge capacity and how the bin size and the bin age and the number of records, they all work together to create the logic and a strategy on how you can use this merge. Right. I hope you guys enjoyed the story. I see you in the next.